Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Torment Titans. We never say the name right. New Ride Blade. Well, however you say it. It's that game. It's episode 83. I'm out of Topia. And where we left off last time, I haven't played for a few months, so I haven't done a lot of these at the moment because I'm a bit bad to be in here. But I do remember getting to this area. And I think I was about to chat with these, or did I finish chatting with these? I don't remember. Probably about to chat with them. Where did we came in from? We came in from over here, the world with them. Oh yeah, and they tried to talk to you. Want to join us? Another yada yada. And I thought I was doing the right thing, and it kind of backfired with fighting them. Anyway, you wouldn't fuck with something. You said something. And also we got to check these, and they got all this because we definitely haven't done it in here. Can't remember if I've talked to you guys or not. Anyway, we're gonna do it today just to make sure. Okay. I guess I think it gives you an occasion if you have, hasn't it, in this, we're not really mistaken. We'll find out. Back again? What do you want? Back again, so I must have chat with you. Tell me about yourself again. Yep, done that, so the game means I've done it. Tell me what you're doing again. Why won't you talk to me about the endless battle again? I'd like to rest here safely. Oh, oh we can rest. We'll do that. Fine, price is a hundred shins. Uh, fine. Because I think that's low at the moment. If that stays on four, I'll be really upset. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, definitely like healed. That. Definitely healed there. Okay. Did we check with you guys, though? So? Did it all save? Nice. The man looks up. What's your name? What are you doing here? Looks like I haven't asked him anything, so let go. What's your name? Actually, I should have wrote what he said first since I hadn't asked him. The man looks up at you momentarily before looking away into the distance at nothing in particular. He takes a drag on his smoke. He pressures his what? His pressure, pressure, pressure. No, presence, presence strikes you as odd, as if something about him was trying to inspire dread in you. Oh, he's trying to be a baddie A word, basically, isn't he? You know, he's doing that whole you walk into the bar thing and he just like looks at, looks at you, then looks away and, and just you know takes a drag of his a cigarette. You know, you mean nothing to me. I don't even have to look at you properly to know that you're beneath. That's what he's trying to do. And Whippers be, oh, scared of little booties. That's what he's trying to do. Looks a gaze at you and stares off in the distance again. Told you. Tell me who you are again. Oh, that was. I just asked him that and that's how he responded. What are you doing here? He's just going to keep looking at the distance, isn't he? Trying to get home. He stabs his smoke at Fyland. Uh, I forgot which one that is. You or you? You got questions? Talk to Fyland. Probably you then. You already met her, yeah? Yeah? He inhales another mouthful of smoke. So he's hurt you, Steph. That's a girl, so I forget to be her. You got horns on you. Said your dessert is from the end battle. He stops breathing, smoke falls from his nevertheless fingers. Nevertheless? Oh, I was trying to say he's never nervous. And his face goes slack with terror. Oh, we upset him. Scared him. He starts shaking and a single sob breaks from his throat before he snaps back into reality. The flat expression settles back onto his face and he picks up his drop smoke. He takes a deliberate drag and only then does his tension ease. No. <laughs> but by your reaction, I think you are. <laughs> You're like, I'm a hard dude and you mess something that gets him in hard. <laughs> no, turns back to them. No, that's not the case. Like, you just blubber and jokes, but whatever, whatever. Uh, can't you tell me anything about the endless battle? Is that the same thing I just asked? His breath hinges, but he controls his reactions this time. No, see it yourself. What can you tell me about the valley? Nothing, just dust and memories. Wow, you're very talkative. So I assume I'm chat with you, yeah, even. Has. The man is busy reading a strange device. An elegant square. square. I was going to say square. Square in it. Of some kind of metal. Odd letters. An image flashes by on a reflective screen embedded in the square. When you draw near, you notice that the device is plugged into his arm with a long silver wire, and one of the man's eyes is mechanical. Oh, cool. So he's his own power source. That'd be good if your phone runs out, isn't it? Now you're on the train, or you're on a, or a plane, or you're going somewhere, and you're like, oh, my battery's dead. Uh, and then you, uh, no, your mate's like, oh, my battery's dead. You're, no problem. Hand it here. Wire into my arm. Feel my energy. Feel my juice. You know, well then you'd be attached to your friend. As you're trying to, you know, 2% trying to, I got a phone home at the moment. Hello, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, stay still. I'm trying to talk here. <laughs> it's a short wire. 
Then he could just be mean and purpose, just, oh, bird, turn around. Oh, you know, I see him just, you know, jerk himself around and he's pulling the purse. <laughs> Okay, uh, and the man's a bit ready now. When you in a square, you don't yeah, read that. Greetings, his voice is kind. No, it buzzes like a rattling sheet of a uh, scythe steel. I am Luca Marigal. Again, sorry about your name. It always happens, always happens. That's why I like you to speak them. And you should read all this to me. Then I don't have to butcher nobody's names. He gestures with the book. Sometimes I read in the old, older tongue. I uncover great knowledge. This way, for instance, his metal eye stutters and clicks, and a tiny voice emerges from the pad. The formal educate education of the young begins to begins in what you oh it must be a place with nervous with nervous systems will take inhabit inhabitators in here a bit oh it's like the long thing I can't say it it's like the long thing isn't it you know like breathe for you and microwave transmissions to the developing fetal brain he clicks it off you see. I do not know the species to which this refers, but I begin to know of them. Okay, at any rate, what can I do for you? Tell me about yourself. He nods. I have spoken my name already, and I butchered it. The knowledge of my character is also more important. I was a soldier, a traveller with my friends. I, I and my friends travel to our, our home, or at least this is our plan. He leans close. I admit to concern for my friends. They seem trapped in the past, paralyzed. They are not as they were when we set out. He gestures to the me mechanical entrust extrusions on his own body. Nor to, nor to be fair, am I. Okay, so in other words, you went out all like, happy go look, yeah, we're great, we're great, we're great, come back. You've lost your arms, you, you know, bits of your eyes, stuff like that. They're like mentally gone. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna act like I'm scary when I'm really a little baby. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. All this stuff. Okay, I get you. I get you. I make some friends. Right. Okay. Um, what do you mean when you say friends are different? I just explained that, but okay. Let him explain it. They were full of hope once. Hence the part where they're going, "I'm being lucky." We and a dozen, we and a dozen others set out from our home, and. Adela west of Cyclist Cliffs. To find fortune in the endless battle, we joined a recruiter in Cyclist Cliffs and enlisted with the army of the Changing God. We thought we were prepared. We were not. We were in trenches. We fought with bolt throwers, energy weapons and detonations. That first day saw half our friends obliterated by a row particular, particular particle, no, a row particle wave, sorry, not particular, particle wave, that emanated from our side of the battlefield. Yeah, that's probably it would be a lot more worse, wouldn't it? You know, a rogue particle wave. Wouldn't it? I don't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> a rogue particular wave. Yeah, a rogue shows up. Uh, instead of getting his daggers out, he's hey, I'm over here waving to you. I'm over here. This is a very particular wave of rogue. Yeah, it is. Doing all of this. Obviously, a big laser beam. <laughs> I think we're a lot more painful and more traumatic than that. But then again, you may be not used to rogues doing that because everyone's used to rogues coming from behind and that's when you oh, What is that? Turn around. And there's a rogue. Now you see me. Here's the knife come out. You're you back. Now you don't. And he's gone. That's and then they die. Now that's a typical rogue, isn't it? Having a rogue in, you know, waving. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at this particular wave I'm doing. That, that could actually be very dramatic. Because you're like, this guy's freaking me out. Why is he doing this? Because there's five rogues behind him. He's about to stab you. <laughs> Good for the conversion tactic, actually. I did read all that and I missed the side of the bathroom, yeah. And then we woke again in a new reality. Our memories of the old were intact, but our bodies whole, except for Tibble, who was half dissolved in the new reality. What? Half dissolved? So it went. Incremental gains as a whole with certain consequences carrying into a new life. Sometimes they would undo all our day heroism for an unseen advantage. Other times we would lose a friend forever. One day I was caught half out of a trench. The air exploded above us and I burned. The new reality did not restore me. Okay. I spent some weeks under the care of Chunginins. When I woke, I was as you saw me. And our old friend had been killed. Valo and Davon reacted very differently to me. They say I too have changed. I don't know. I know that I no longer fear. I do not remember much of emotion. I recall the fear and horror, but I do not recall its taste. 
and when I spoke to them, they agreed that it was time for us to leave. To leave before we became these forgotten names, lost in a flux of worlds. Huh. So your name again? Anything else you like to sell? Uh, anything else? He frowns. I'm unwilling to commit personal details to a stranger. I have told you what I'm willing to share, no more. I can't you just had a full conversation with me almost. Since you're just us. Gonna act like, like, react like him. He frowns, yes. We have left our posts. But I do not believe we have deserted. I believe we have become aware. The battle is endless and our struggle means nothing. If our struggle means nothing, why should we continue to struggle? Mm, good point. So struggle reveals who you really are. You struggle for something greater than yourself. An ideal, perhaps. For power, for glory. Hmm. Hmm, which one? Because you struggle reveals who you really are. I don't see how that works. You struggle for something greater than yourself. An ideal, perhaps. Yeah. He considers your words for a time. Uh, had our commanders presented an ideal for us to follow, this might have been true. But we fought for money and for glory. Oh, I should have gone with the bottom one. We found no great measures of either. We will not be going back. Can you tell me about the valley? It is a dry place. I tasted the water that bubbled up nearby. It was alkaline and induced strange visions. My new metallism protected me from the worst of it. Had my friends tasted it, they might be might have died. He looks down at his metal part. We have found no bodies, nor anything of value. All is quiet. But this is a waypoint, not a destination. Okay. Thank you. Hmm, is there any... Guess we're Here done. Comes the boredom slayer. The boredom slayer, yes. So I want to get down here now. There's nothing. Oh, I saw what says. These packs are lived out of what appears ready to leave at the moment's notice. They smell faint with herbs and ozone. A recent landslide has closed off what was once a pass out of the valley. Oh. Same thing. Crisp, pungent water uh, issues from an inhuman head. There's nothing further up the slope to indicate where the water is coming from. Okay, it's yellow and you want to try it, seriously. Yes. Can we get up there? Apparently not. Guess we need to get down here. Oh, we have to take one of these teleporters places, didn't they, if I remember correctly? Yes. So I guess we've got to go back to that one. Yes, now, apparently. Go. Tears us a spacer in the air, walking the dot and sound the dot and slowly. down here. Did I check that? Or did I just go in that and teleport upwards? Let me say. Because you know these things can just kill you and then the last 30 minutes of talking has been well stilled. I have a tell PS30, why not? Yeah. Yeah, that's something I could do. Do what? Oh, okay. Thought you were going to give me a good conversation then. A tear of space hangs before you like a black spot on your retina. Something's different about this. Tear from the others in the valley. Looking into this one is is like looking into the abandoned cave. No breeze or sound or light still within it and edges are slowly disintegrating. Step into darkness. Oh, again, I've already done it. You ended the whirlwind again and again you are battered by debris before being spit back in the same opening you came in. This is a portal somewhere it seems to be blocked. Yes, that's why. Oh, yes, that's probably going to take me. Probably somehow we've got to unlock that to get to another location, probably. Which is probably what we're going to do. But I'm assuming we can get to one of these or up here with this stuff. Here comes the bottom slayer. Blob of Frey. Sure. Can you try this? What is it? Rising before you is a tall and tappering obelisk, crowned with the with the what? Carved stone head of some elegant, sharp-eared animal with six eyes. Wrapping around the obelisk are brand a band of engraved hieroglyphs. Examine the stone head. Examine the hieroglyphs. Examine the base. Okay. Examine the stone head. The carved head mounted on top of the obelisk, obelisk, uh, obelisk, well, however you say it, the cat head, stares out into the distance, its eyes empty and, and mournful. Examine the hieroglyphs. 
except for four style, stylized depiction of the same sharp-eared animal that tops the whatever it is. The pictographs make no sense. Because I'm in the base. The base of the ballistic the cat head is smooth, untouched by any weathering or other troubles that seem to have eroded much of the other ruins in this place. Sits in a pool of acidic liquid. The, li the liquid smells foul and catastrophic, but the cat head appears undamaged. It's unclear how much more of this cat head lies beneath the pool. Base again. Look into the statue's eyes. A, wear, a wave of dizziness overcomes you as you gaze into the statue's eyes. You are no longer facing the, this cat head. Indeed, you are no longer human. And with that, I'm going to end this episode here, so please like, please subscribe, please share this video, please tune in next week, and watch more on the channel too. And next week we'll find out what happens when I continue, because I'm no longer human now apparently. See you this week, bye everyone.